<laughs> I was trying to figure out where we had met originally. AJGA. I know, but I was like, I think it was Annika. Oh, it, are, are we talking about details and like exactly where we met? Um, yeah. I mean, at least which tournament. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I think it was Annika. You think so? Yeah. Huh. I, I like have no idea. I just know that I know you. I know you too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, every time I welcome somebody to the podcast, I have them go through their quick nine. So I'm going to ask you your quick nine questions. Um, your first one is, what is the favorite club in the bag? Um, I'd say my putter. Hmm. Yeah, nice. I like my putter. I, I I know everyone expects me to say driver, and right. it used to be my driver. Uh, but yeah. then I kind of slowly moved away after I turned professional to my putter. Love it. All right. Yeah. What was the last show that you watched? Like TV show? Yeah, Netflix, whatever it is. Uh, um. <laughs> oh my gosh this is really hard uh I, 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 <laughs> i'm really stumping you with the hard questions i know what bat. tv show you know i haven't watched netflix just because i was pissed that i learned that they were gonna raise two dollars every month for 2021 and yeah. then they came out with this huge announcement saying they're going to have a movie every single week. Yep. I'm like, well, why? Why? I didn't ask for a new movie every single week. <laughs> every single week? What are we <laughs> just going to watch you now? Oh, that's ridiculous. Um, so I have put, I put a hold on that. I do like to go on YouTube and just watch a lot of YouTube clips. That's okay, it. cool. I don't watch What's any like- your like, favorite like YouTuber? Like, do you watch the YouTubers or do you just like watch videos? videos okay. i don't watch a youtuber because yeah. it, it's just like i've noticed i tried following a youtuber and it was just like uh not my thing <laughs> yeah no okay do you i feel like th these are all gonna just be difficult what was the last book that you read oh no uh so i'm reading um i'm reading this book i actually just bought a bunch of books i just spent like a hundred bucks I, I didn't know we had a book rack near where I live because there's a book rack. It's like they, they sell used books and there's one in LA. Oh, cool. And I found one here in Orlando and I was like shocked. But I went in and I bought, I bought a bunch of books. And then um, one of the books that I'm about to read is um, it's for recovering alcoholics. Not that I am one, but you know, I had an hour long conversation with the book owner because she's a recovery alcoholic who's been sober okay. for 30 years. Wow. She was like, is this for you? I was like, well, no, but yeah, it is for me. But uh, like, I'm not recovering from being an alcoholic. I just like, I'm interested in reading this. <laughs> I think that's fair. I yeah. think it makes you an empathetic person because you can Aww, thanks. <laughs> somebody else struggles with. Yeah. So I was like, this is pretty cool. Look at you. How cool. <laughs> um, what's your favorite drill to practice? Um, probably probably my putting drill just because it's, I do it so consistently like and I just I find it fun uh I just have I set up eight tees around the hole and uh -huh. three feet apart uh each each tee from the hole and then I move out um four feet five feet and then I end okay. at five feet and then unless I need six feet I go six feet but usually it's three four five nice what is your favorite social media channel Instagram nice what is your favorite snack to have on the golf course? Um, probably just beef jerky. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What are some of your interests outside of golf? Uh, well, talking to strangers, but that's been difficult because of last year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And then um, I like hiking, fishing. Yeah, just being outdoors is fun. I like hiking a lot. I am going to ask you later about some of your hobbies, but we'll get to it. <laughs> your LPGA tour profile. <laughs> you know, I have been doing a lot of one thing lately. Okay, great. Um, who is your favorite person to play a practice round with? Oh, practice round with? On the LPGA or just? Whatever. I guess, I mean, yeah. Well, it has to be on the LPGA. You're playing for fun. 
Yeah. Uh, well, I did. So during quarantine and when the pandemic was going on crazy, we didn't yeah. have any turns to play. At my golf club, we created this Sunday Sunday group. It's cool. uh, my our GM, yeah. uh, a, a friend, and his daughter, and then me, and we just go out and play until like it gets dark. That's awesome. Where? What club? A uh, Hacienda Golf Club. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Apparently, we got named like one of the best golf courses on Golf Channel. We were like, oh my oh. gosh, <laughs> <Look at laughs> so us. exciting! I know. Look at it. We made it. And then on tour, who would be like your favorite? Oh, um. You know, I recently played with Jay, Jay Marie Green last year, towards the end of the year. And I was like, this is really cool. I like playing with you. And she was like, I like playing with you too. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And last, what is your favorite shot to play? Um, draw, probably. Yeah, draw. Yeah. I would like to play a baby fade, but it brings difficulty to my game. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. At least you know your game. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to start at the kind of the beginning, but you won. So you won the seven to eight year old junior world golf championship. Oh, wow. We're going from the beginning. Oh, we're going from the beginning. You won the California state women's amateur as a 12 year old, again, as a 14 year old, you were the youngest player at the 2011 U S women's amateur co-medalist at the U S women's amateur and the youngest player in the field at the 2012 women's U S open. And then you competed in the junior soul cup in 2015. So like that, there's a lot there, but how would you like summarize your amateur career? Um, it, how do I summarize it? You know, there was a lot of good, you know, the yeah. funniest thing I've only won one AJJ event. I felt like, I had a lot of potential, but I never worked for it. And it kind of okay. showed up. Um, but then, and then you kind of, when I turned pro, I just kind of started to realize that I need to really work for my game and it just doesn't come naturally. Like it comes naturally, but you, for all the success to come along with it, like you see girls out there winning all the time on AJGA and finishing consistently up there, they really put in the effort. So when I turned professional, I started really putting the effort and working on my game and uh, fine tuning a lot of things that I wasn't good at. Yeah, so you decided to go pro instead of play collegiately. How did you make that decision? Um, you know, it's funny, like it was something that other people almost talked you into. Oh, okay. It's like, cause you know, like, you know, you're pretty good, but you're like, you don't really just think I'm going to skip and fly high, um, right. just go soaring through the skies. But then everybody's like, oh, she's going to turn pro. She's going to turn pro. And then, and then one day I just said, you know what? I will try then. <laughs> just like, I never thought about it, but now I will try. So I did it. And then I was going to, if I had to go to any college, it would have been USC. And okay. at that time, the head coach is Andrea Gaston. And I thought she would have been great if I went to college and I had a college coach she would probably be the dream college coach and then we, we we kept in touch then and i was like you know i'm gonna go try the letq school i chose mm -hmm. letq school just because i didn't think about trying q school until like later in to the year and um with the letq school you don't have to go through the stages with my amateur ranking you can just go straight to the final stage nice. so i was like okay i'm gonna go try uh, and then i got through and i was like you know what why not turn pro because eventually down the line of my career, I'm going to do it. Why right. not now? Yeah. Because like, I feel like one day when I really want to turn professional and I, I go through all these steps, I might miss this train. Yeah. I mean, you could miss like your peak if you want. Yeah. And, and yeah, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. It might as well happen now. You yeah. can't have it all. Right. I love it. Um, I was watching a video and you were saying like, you really liked the LAT, but like the travel got to be a lot. Do you still think that like, it was a lot? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't station there at all. Uh, I just kept okay. traveling back and forth. Wow. And there was not, there was not a lot of tournaments. So it's kind of hard. Right. Okay. I, but I, I do like the LAT people a lot. Not saying that LPJ is not great, but LAT is, it's like, it's like a group where it's harder to get in, but once you're in, you're you feel like you're a family. Nice. Yeah. Do you feel like, and we'll talk a little bit about Solheim Cup, but did you know any of the players at Solheim Cup because of your LET experience? Um no. Okay. <laughs> no. Because yeah. honestly, LET, no, no, honestly, the European teams 
is is like LPG. They're yeah. all LPG. They're not really yeah. LET. Maybe there's right. one, but that's that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, they're pretty much based here anyway. Yeah. I gotcha. Okay, so your rookie year was 2017 for the LPGA. Mm-hmm. And how old were you then? 18. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, 18. Feel young? Or were you kind of like, I've been here, I'm like playing with, you know, legends and certainly people I've looked up to, but did you feel so much younger? Um, no, just because I played a year on the European tour, it's like, uh, okay. Yeah. It's not like I know what was happening, <laughs> but yeah. it was like, yeah, I'm a pro. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I've been a pro already for a year. And the thing about me, I, it's like when I was, uh, I think 12 or 13, I can't remember. But when I played the US Women's Open, I just always felt like no matter what my age was, I was always a competitor. So like you see girls who get into US Women's Open and they ask for autograph, regardless to whether they're in the field or not. And my mom was like, why don't you do it? Why don't you do it? I was like, no, I cannot. I can do it if I missed a cut, but I can't do it now. Oh. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. I just feel why, like wait why did you feel that way though that you couldn't because cut? yeah um it's like if I'm in the field I'm competing okay I just feel like I need to be equal at them I can't look like I look up to them on the inside but I don't want to physically show it because I'm a competitor I don't want to be any different right or treated yeah, you wanted different. to be on the same playing field yeah we're on the same playing field so might as well have that mindset and work, work into it yeah so, I mean, at this point, you know, you aren't one of the new players on tour. <laughs> You've been around. And do you feel like you have a lot of good professional experience under your belt at this point? Like, where do you feel like you're at? Because, like, you were, you became a professional pretty young. And you became a rookie in 2017. So, that, oh, that's four years ago. So, how do you feel? Um... I feel like I've been here for a while, even though it's only four, fourth season, going to my fifth season this year. Yeah. And the last year doesn't really count. But, um, you know, it's like the four years on tour is like eight years in, in the real world. It feels like it's a long time. Um, I definitely feel like my game and me as a person has grown a lot after turning professional and experiencing everything. Uh, and traveling as much as we do. Uh, And, you know, I just uh, hope to accomplish more. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I I was like trying to like, I was trying to think about you when, where you kind of sit in your career. And I was like, well, she's not like new on tour. No. You're certainly not you haven't like reached your peak in my opinion. So I'm kind of like, I don't know. Like I was just curious, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, I, if it's in that regards, I don't think I'm near my peak. I think I'm going yeah. there. Um, I haven't, I don't even think I've touched it. I, I still believe that um, I maybe throughout the four years, I wish I should have won an event, but you know, it has taught me that winning an event is a lot harder than it is, um, not as easy. Mm-hmm. Even though you have a good week, it doesn't mean that you will win or even be close to winning. Um, and sometimes even sometimes when you have a bad week and you just keep grinding, you stay in there, you could be close to winning. But just winning to get that trophy will take a lot of skill and a little bit of luck. It doesn't just take all sure. skill. Sure. Uh, and it just really has taught me patience and just watch that leaf drop one by one from that tree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not easy. I know it's not easy. Right. And it's probably something you kind of have to learn too, especially if you have a lot of success in your amateur career. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we, we have to talk about Solheim Cup because it's mm-hmm. cool. And I'm sitting inside Inverness right now and it's here. Are, are you at the golf club? <laughs> yeah, I'm hiding. Um, and so you were captain's pick in 2017, your rookie year. And I was watching a video and it was, you were saying how, you know, Julie Inkster really noticed your strong game off the tee and how you hit it really far. But talk to me a little bit about just like what it was like to be a captain's pick. You know, did you realize that like you were in the running to you, were you being talked about to be on the team? Um, 
Uh, yes and no. Yeah. I mean, I definitely, I, I definitely in the back of my mind knew I was being talked about, but okay. I wasn't being publicly talked about. Okay. Um, I just know I was being talked about myself and my caddy. Um, yeah. Because at that time, so they had like a preseason, like as I came out of nowhere, really, I really came out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, there was like a preseason practice thing, Solheim, that was held in Texas. I wasn't okay. invited to. So obviously you weren't in the radar to be yeah. invited to. So you kind of knew it was like, okay, I'm going to work my way into it. It doesn't really matter because it was in the beginning of the year. Yeah. Um, and then before me, there's a lot of good choices. Not just me, you know, everybody played pretty well, even though, and, and with the captain's pick, it's fitting with the team. It doesn't mean that you're a great sure. golfer that you're going to get picked. You have to fit with the whole entire team dynamic. It's like the team picking you uh, as, as uh, you know, with the captain picking. The captain's right. making a decision, but the team also is making a decision as well. Mm. So when you get picked as a captain's pick, you just know that the whole entire team picked you. And it, that's, that's the thing that's really like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. Cause the whole entire team just be like, Oh, you know, I think she could be a better choice for the team. That's cool. I never thought of it that way. I just thought of it as like the captain, like envisions what they want and then you're plopped in, but it is, I mean, at that point they know who's on the team. Yeah. I think it's more of like a team dynamic thing Yeah, uh, that will fit. So the captain has a lot of say, but I also, throughout the process, I realized the the players in, in the field, like the, in the team has a lot of say as well. I also really like what you said about like, you knew in the back of your mind that you were being talked about for it, but you weren't like publicly. Because we, I mean, if you like scroll Twitter, for example, during a Ryder Cup or Solheim Cup year, people are just guessing the whole time of like, who's going to be on the team? Like, who's going to be the captain's picks? This is who I think should be a captain's pick. And we are not in it we're just speaking from our couches so yeah you know I mean obviously there's like experts but at the end of the day it is it's that people that make that call yeah it it is tough because you if you I well the thing is I don't read any comments I rarely do yeah (laughs) so I don't know I I really didn't know and I'm always on Instagram Instagram and Twitter are so different like so where everybody talks Instagram is where you see cat videos right so that's what I did I just kept and watching so I, cat I, videos I, yeah and I guess I guess that helped as well <laughs> you yeah. just watch the cat videos and you don't know what's happening in this world you just know in the back of your mind you're being talked about you just need to work as hard as you can nice and then I was trying to find it but could it in 2019 did you earn your way in through the ranking system yeah I went in through Rolex ranking okay yeah that must have felt good yeah, that did feel good. Um, <laughs> the funniest thing was, I was like on the borderline. I I I felt like I should have played better to get in like with ease, but then I was like still on the border. I was like you know a little bit frustrated at this at the time. Yeah. Um, but I was like I snuck in there. I was like yes, I did it. I got it with my own ranking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It definitely sure felt it, nice. Yeah. And after like making the team in 2017 and the U.S. won in 2017. Correct. So you want, you want to play again. Like you got your case of it and you want it back. Yeah. And it's also nicer to play your way into the team considering your first time was a captain's pick. Right. Instead of just be like, people could be like, oh, she just got picked. She got lucky. And then, but right. then the next year you, you get in by yourself. You're like, well, it wasn't a bad pick. You, you, you know? validated <laughs> it. Yeah. yeah. I validated it pretty much. Nice. So your overall record is three, two, one in Solheim cup. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Did, and you have, I was like trying to put it together. So you have the match play experience with the USGA events, the women's amateur and such, but did you always enjoy match play? Because, you know, if you weren't playing in college, you weren't getting a ton of like team event experience. So why do you think that you have a pretty strong suit for match play? Um, I've always liked match play. I just like, I just like the intensity of it. <laughs> I just yeah. like the you and me. Uh, yeah. part of it instead of just because the biggest part with playing com- like stroke play you play against not you do not play against you play against the field yes you're playing against the field but you're playing against yourself a lot yeah but in match play you're playing against them and mm-hmm. yourself in a little bit so you, if you stay calm you beat the opponent but you're playing with them and you just keep playing and sometimes you, you can it's um it, it's, it's very it's a little bit different 
And I just like that aspect of it because you're playing against the opponent instead of all the other mental game you have to work on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what would you say is like just one of your favorite memories? I mean, I think, I feel like I remember like you and Lizette played really well together. Um, did you like, did you guys stay close after the Solheim Cup? Yeah, so uh, I always know, I always knew Lizette because we kind of grew up in the same area. She grew up in Azusa and okay. she's, you know, a stud, super famous, right? <laughs> um, and then I grew up in Arcadia and we, we kind of know the same people, like coaches, people, friends, whatever, right? We all know the same people, small place. And um, we, we, we never talked because just there was such a huge age gap. I don't mm. think she'd like to hear that, but there's such a huge age gap. <laughs> well, so you're like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's nine years apart. So uh, we, we never really got to talk. And then because of Solheim, we became really close friends, uh, not just through the match play, but afterwards we kept our uh, friendship going. And nice. she became one of my closest friends on tour. Yeah. So that's really nice and thankful for because of uh, Solheim. Yeah, yeah. Do you like, do any like memories specifically stand out between the two years? Uh, what do you mean? Like, was there any moment to you that you're like, when you're just like sitting thinking about Solheim Cup, you're like, that was cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the, the coolest thing is like, when, when you don't know what's happening. Okay. So my first Solheim, I got put out I believe around the fifth to sixth group. Um, and I don't know. I don't know. I'd just be like, okay, yeah, I'm going to go play. I'm going to go play golf now. Right. Yeah. And then afterwards, my caddy was like, did you know what it meant to be put like fifth, like in the middle of the group, especially mm. where their points were? I was like, no, what does it mean? He goes, it means that you probably clinch the point or you'll be a big, like you're a big. You're an the anchor. Point getter. Yeah. Yeah. Because we need the first few points to get in. And I was like, oh, I didn't know. Well, I did good. <laughs> I, I got half a point. And, um, and I, I think because Lizette was doing really well behind me, my point clinched uh, the cup. Nice. That's sweet. Yeah. Oh, what a cool I don't know. It was pretty cool. Because you just think about it. Because like, Caddy tells you, just like in your room, you're like, ah, huh. oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it it's so cool that like, you know, I, I'm sure as people continue to play in more and more of those events, they like realize what certain things mean, but it was nice that like you kind of just came into it and you're like, I'm just going to go like, go play my best golf. And that that's what matters and not necessarily like when you're going to go play or anything like that. Yeah, for sure. And, um, to have that trust when you're a captain's pick means a lot afterwards because you're just sitting in a room. But before that, obviously, you just sit there and be like, oh, that's cool. Let's go play. Yeah, that's awesome. So after you competed in both the Solheim Cups, I, I personally felt like your name was just like in the golf media. It was known. You just, you know, it elevated your status of being a known player on the LPGA. Do you feel like that helped with like sponsorships or anything like that um no <laughs> uh i don't know if I, okay so you you say that my name has really gotten out there i don't i don't know um i feel like i still need to work my way like to to validate my name really i have to win a term okay maybe 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 not yeah um yeah. but sponsorship Sponsorship with LPGA golfers, from what I hear and see, is pretty hard. Um, yeah. And even though playing two Solheims, I personally have not gotten more sponsors. <laughs> I've sure. kind of just stuck the same or lost more. So going into this year, I okay, so what happened last year is I did leave my agency. And then okay. this year I did sign with someone new. And I'm okay. starting with ground zero, zero sponsors. So we'll see what happens. But I, to answer your, yeah, to answer your question, I don't think it does help. Like it helps you be like, oh, I plan on Solheim. But for sponsorship wise, it hasn't helped me at all. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Didn't realize you didn't have any sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> for well, the ladies, like I have no money, but like I, I will support you. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> I want that tie dye uh, towel. Okay. Well, as I long as you use it. I know. I love it. That looks so yeah. cool. 
It's so comfy. Well, yeah, I'll give you a towel and then you can wear it on tour and like. Well. Yeah, be like, who look? <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes me a little sad to be honest, but I'm I'm sure it's just something that you've seen a lot of and. Yeah, um, there's opportunity for more sponsorships for women in golf. I hope as well. Um, because honestly, I feel like our tour is going on a rise. Yeah. Uh, I just hope as the LPGs, yeah, it, like it takes us on the train as well instead of just LPGA taking off and the players sure. are not. <laughs> because yeah. without the LPGA players, there is no LPGA. Yeah. Yeah. And they know that, but yeah, you, you definitely need the, the sponsors to businesses to support the women as well. Individually. Yeah, for sure. Even though, um, for sure last year wasn't great for businesses, but there's opportunities in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you are currently at 77 in the rankings, which like it's the beginning of the year, so it is what it is. But last year you started at 40. Do you pay attention to that? And this, I'm talking about the Rolex rankings. Yeah. Attention to that type of thing or? Um, no, just because when you, the how you play, you in the back of your mind, you already know where you're at. Okay. So why check? Yeah. <laughs> it's like you had a bad year and you already know because you're playing. But you're still going to go online and check where you're at just to make yourself what feel worse. Yeah. <laughs> like, like you already know. So uh, I'm the type of person to be like, if I'm playing good, it's going to happen. If I'm playing right. bad, I know I'm going to be dropping. Uh, so I, I don't really look. My mom will probably look and she'll tell me, but I'm like, I can't hear you. <laughs> I know where I am. It's right. Just, yeah. I'm, I'm living it. I'm living this life. So I already know where my rankings are. So I, I really don't look just because I feel like it will make me think more negatively and uh, it, it won't help. Yeah. No, that's so good. I think, I feel like I've heard that a little bit too. I was reading, I think like the Golf Digest article with the Corda sisters and they made a similar comment of like, it's hard to pay attention because it changes so much. And like week after week, you're like, I don't know, like, I don't really know where I'm at. I finished at one place here and the next week somebody else finished here and we swapped like, so it, it, it's silly to get caught up in it, but I was just curious. Yeah, no, for sure. Because the Rolex King covers the entire world. I don't know what the other hemisphere is doing. Right. <laughs> so yeah. And the way they, they, they do their points is very difficult to calculate. So it just bounces up and down. Got it. Yeah. I don't even think about that. Like, of course, I mean, it's your official world golf ranking. Like you don't know what's going on on that across the world. Yeah. If I'm number one, I'll just see it there. And my caddy will have a, my, ha- my caddy will get a green bib. We all know. Oh, that's right. I know. Just look at my caddy. Ah, no, number one. That's right. That's right. Um, so I feel like you, you just have like a good energy and you find the entertaining things in life. Like I was watching, oh my gosh, this is old, but you were, did like one of those like Kia drive-alongs. Yeah. The alley kick lighter. Oh yeah. <laughs> you were like, I need to stop the car because I can't reach the pedals. <laughs> just like, I just feel like you're really good at like finding the fun in life. And um, when I was reading your bio, it said one of your favorite um, hobbies is hibernating. Hi- hibernating. Hibernating. And I oh, literally laughed out yeah. loud. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's a better word than sleeping? Oh, hibernating. Because it makes sense. I I can sleep like a koala. <laughs> um, the, my longest record was, I think, I think not, was it 19 hours? Oh my gosh. My mom legit. <laughs> She came up to me. She, 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 this is what she told me when I woke up. She's like, I put a finger next to your nose because I thought you were dead. <laughs> she just wanted to check. Yeah, she was like, she's sleeping too long. Mm, okay, she's okay. Oh my gosh. I love sleeping too. So like, I, I cannot blame you at all. People are like, so what time do you wake up for work? I'm like, the last possible minute I have to. Yeah, I'll, I'll be calculating. I'm like, okay, yes. so five minutes of 
five minutes to do this, six minutes to do this. If I do everything quickly, oh, I'll save a minute. <laughs> Eight oh yeah. two is when I will wake up. <laughs> yes, same. I love it. And I'll also count down to bedtime. So I know how many hours of sleep I'm going to get. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'll be like, okay, it's 10 o'clock. <laughs> If I'm going to get as much sleep as I want to get, like I need to get going to get. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I do that too. Like, oh, time's running out. I guess uh, if I have something to do tomorrow, I'm going to sleep right now, right this second. When you travel, do you typically share a hotel room with somebody or what do you, what do you do? My, my mom. Your mom. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And, I, and the thing is, I can't complain about her sleeping because I sleep worse. I sleep talk. <laughs> she grinds her teeth and I can hear that but I sleep talk so we kind of like you as she, yeah as she grinds her teeth I just scream <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> apparently apparently we were we were playing at Pinehurst for the north south event yeah and we we rented a cabin in the middle of the woods and it was like scary itself already <laughs> and then um the 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 floors there creak and everything and then at night, we, because we had a, like, there was only one bed there in that house. So we had okay. to sleep in the same bed. Oh, <laughs> I know. She always puts like a wall of pillows in, in between us just so I don't like come over. Cause I like to kick too. I like move a lot. I won't be like in the same position when I wake up from when I. You're literally off. kicking and screaming. Yeah. <laughs> Never really grew up. Uh, <laughs> so then, <laughs> and then that night, like I rolled over, I had my hand over her like this. And she was like sleepy. She's like, oh. she woke up startled. And I was like, stop, don't move. Now speak. <laughs> like in that, like in that tone, she was like, what am I supposed to say? She was trying to make a conversation. And then she realized five minutes later that I was deep asleep. She was like, yep. oh my God, this child. <laughs> <laughs> she was so pissed. Where do you think you get like your positive energy from like is your mom very similar to you um yeah I, I think so I think my mom's similar yeah in a way she's different she's different though but she's pretty positive she's she's happy <laughs> yeah because I just I don't know I was watching like the no laying up thing the, the when you played with them at Hazeltine oh yeah I think we're having the best time and I'm like sometimes like to me if I'm like meeting somebody new it like takes me a minute to like warm up to them but I felt like you just kind of like we're going with the flow and you were just like noting funny things that were happening around you yeah you know it, it so I, I think I guess we're similar in a way but I feel like when we're filming something it's just like well this is it we gotta do it now <laughs> now or never <laughs> Angel there's no warming up no more <laughs> so but like I, I do horrible with large crowds if there's like okay. a party and I walk in I only know one person and then one person is like the host or something. And there's like 10 strangers in that location. I'll be like stuck to a wall. I'll be yeah. pretend I'm, I'll, I'll pretend I'm on my phone, but really I'm looking at the calendar. And I don't even know what I'm looking at. <laughs> so you're better one-on-one. -on -one. I'm better one-on-one -on -one in small groups. Like yeah. maybe five and below, all yeah. strangers. But yeah. then five and above, like six, seven, I kind of get uncomfortable. Um, and then above that, I just, I don't, I don't do well. I, yeah. I don't do well in public speaking as well. Which is funny because you like talking to strangers. I do, but one-on-one, -on -one. see, that's, my mom had to send me, she noticed I had an issue and then she sent me to like a debate class and I couldn't, like, I just stare like at the classroom and I'll just be like, oh, this is not okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all, all, <laughs> all the paperwork I did, all the notes, oh doesn't work speak angel I don't know I couldn't I just I can't do it um when I won in Dubai <laughs> I like it blacked out <laughs> I don't know what I said yeah I stood up on the podium and then later that night when everybody was partying because it was the last event they were like we can do a remix of how many times you said tournament that <laughs> that speech <laughs> or that whatever you gave I was like <laughs> oh I don't remember <laughs> I was just sweating balls of sweat I was like this it's over okay bye thank you I mean, I would say it's much harder to win a golf tournament than it is to like thank, thank people after. <laughs> I know. Okay. Like, yeah, 
in that matter, I'll be like, I'll definitely win. And I'll just be like, thank you. <laughs> yes. Peace you out. just like know what you can handle. So you'd be like, yeah. thank you. That was great. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, thank you. Because yes. like they, they give you a sheet of people like you have to think, right? Um, yeah. And then there's names. I'm horrible with names. And sometimes like with my closest friends, you just forget their name because you call them by something else. And you're like, oh. Well, there's What's a, what is their name? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, I mean, that's probably one of your funnier moments on tour. Is there anything else that like just makes you laugh on tour? Um, no, but more like if you see me ever laughing on the course and the camera pans over to me and just start looking at the putter and I like start laughing, it's just because I remember something that embarrassing. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. Uh, no, it kind of just, it's like those memories that haunts you. Yeah. You can't, you don't have it on the tip of your tongue, but then when you're alone by yourself, <laughs> it just comes back and haunts you. Like right before you go to sleep, it haunts you. Like, oh, remember that thing you did seven years ago? <laughs> oh, that was embarrassing, but like kind of funny. So it's fine. Yeah. Let me replay it for you. Oh my gosh. So what would you say is like one of your biggest hopes for women's golf this year? And, and certainly want to know, like, do you have goals for yourself this year? And then also for the game itself? Uh, my goal, I'll start out with my goal. My goal yeah. is to play on Solheim again. Okay. It's going to be in the U.S. and I would love to be part of that team again and bring that trophy back. Yes. Love that. Mm. For the, for women's golf. Yeah. <laughs> for, for LPJ, find a new commissioner. <laughs> yes, you do need to find a new commissioner. I can find a new commissioner. Um, I really do hope that women's golf gets a little bit more respect than it has in the past few years, uh, especially more like last year as well. Um, Cause it's something that people actually do like. With, yeah. When I talk to people, they don't turn, they, they don't, they're not like the comment section in Golf Digest under a woman's post. They're not like that. Right. They love women's golf. They just can't see it. They just can't find it. And they're not going to be able to watch it at two in the morning or in a time where they're eating or, right. you know, it's just like those odd times. They can't watch it then. Right. And if they only show it maybe once a day or even less than that, then there's no opportunity for them to watch. Uh, so they can't love something if they don't see it. Yep. Yeah. And I, I hope that we get better time slots, you know, a little bit more respect from everyone. Like, I think our fans really respect us and love us. Oh, yeah. It's just the other people. Yeah. And it's probably because, like you just said, if, you know, if they aren't watching or they're not paying attention, then they don't really know what they're missing. Mm -hmm. and because they don't have the opportunities to watch and follow is so limited they can only like so many people on our tour and learn so many people on our tour compared to the men who's like you can name 30 easy who's right. ever playing and there's like a there's a fan section for all of them right. not because like I mean they're great golfers but to know all of those people we have just as many good golfers on our tour but you just have no opportunity to learn about them because every time we're shown, there's only 15 minutes. And in right. 15 minutes, how many people can you learn? Right. There's only limited to so many people compared to, I guess, an hour of showing. Sure. sure. No, that's, that's such a good point. And I think that you know, that's something certainly I try to do. It's like just share all of the great women who are playing on the tour and they all have cool stories and they all like, I think it's also, it's also really cool how passionate you guys are about your tour and how much you care about, you know, each other and how much you care about like you succeeding, but the tour itself succeeding. And then also the women's game succeeding. Like that's a lot of things. And it's cool to see that, you know, it seems to me that most pretty much all players on the LPGA really care about extending that. Yeah. I mean, obviously we're not as big, so we, really have to work together and yeah. the girls are a little bit more humbling I think sure. as well and they're more grounded 
and pretty well-rounded. Like if you see a lot of them, they know a lot of things and they're very interesting people if you have a chance to, to get to know them. Yeah, I love And it's the same thing, like um, F1 really took off last year or the year before, 2019, just because of their documentary, The, the Race to yes. Survive or something like mm-hmm. that. Um, I've never watched it, but that really just took off. And it kind of, from what I've learned, they covered a lot of the drivers. Yes, there's only like so many drivers in there. So it's easier to, to cover and to tell their stories, but they were able to focus on everyone and tell them their story. Just like, and not saying like their story is not hard. Our story is just as hard, but you just, it's different as a golfer. You know, right. as a golfer, you're always out there alone. You don't have a team. It's just me, myself, and I. And the struggle that we go through, the practices that we have to handle in our teams and, and everything, um, like how much we earn. The people be like, oh, you earn so much money, blah, 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 blah. But like, first, we have a government to pay. Second, we have our employees to pay. And third, our expenses, right. everything. Right. At the end of the day, how much do we actually earn? Not that right. much. Not as much as you think. Sure. So like there's so many details and stories that we can tell people and have them listen, but we just need the opportunity to like, you know, F1, they did it. They did it successfully. And look how F1 has really taken off. It's pretty cool. Well, and I, you know, people gravitate toward stories that they care about and their story Mm -hmm. to them. And so you, you need to hear those stories in order to, to feel moved and to want to pay attention. Yeah. And I come to realize like people are not, that interested in a picture perfect story anymore we want to know everything more the human side of it yeah i love that well to end every episode i ask what advice do you have for women who want to pick up golf um i i don't have an advice but i do i do like i hear a lot of people tell me uh especially women when they be like oh um i'm scared scared to pick up golf just because yeah. I don't think I can hit the golf ball. It's mm-hmm. okay. Don't be scared. Just try it. And then w- once you try it, you hit the golf ball, you'll like the thrill and then you, you'll love the game forever. You can't be too afraid to try. A lot of people I hear is like, they're just too afraid to try because they find it embarrassing or it just will, t- will be too hard, but you yeah. will never know unless you try. But you got to pick up that club. Perfect. Well, keep me posted on um, how that book finishes. I'm very <laughs> Yeah, I'll let you know. <laughs> that was the least expected answer that I was. <laughs> yeah. I'm reading about recovering alcoholics. Yeah. And the funniest thing, um, so we talked about it and then she gave me a little red book. It, it's like what their AA meetings have come together to write about. Sure. And then um, in the back of it, she gave me the, the, the compressed version. But oh. in the original book, it was like a bunch of the stories that all of them wrote out that they had to go through. That's so cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And that's what you get from talking to strangers. Yeah, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on, Angel. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.